I know I'm totally in a different place today. I get it, but it's fine. It's cool. Nobody panic. You've seen this room before. I'm just not in my soap shop, you know, with the wall of soaps behind me like I normally have. Now I have a wall of Taylor Swift. This is my happy place. But yeah, the real reason I'm not in the soap shop right now is because we are in the middle of doing a massive order for a grocery store and like every square inch of counter is used. It's being used 24 hours a day. It's cuckoo bananas in there. So there's no way filming is going to occur. But also I've been playing with settings on, you know, the computer and all the monitors and all the things, you know, inside the house. So we can do, you know, members only lives and lives in general, really, because Mr. Soap and Clay and I realized recently that it's been a while since we've done one of those guys. So we're due. But really, I just want to do members only lives and maybe open up a voice channel in the discord and people can just, you know, pop in and talk during the live if they want all of the things. So I've been playing with these settings when I have time, which is like, you know, midnight. I'm not sleeping, but yeah, so that's why I'm in a different place. We're still talking about soap, though, even though I'm here. Obviously, my area has nothing whatsoever to do with what we are talking about today, but I will tell you what we are talking about today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are a Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 16 of year 3, and we are continuing on with fun, weird stuff to do with lye infusions. And the reason why we started this is because Sandy from Alaska Soaps and Such, which I think is Alaska Soaper now, I pinned her comment in the first video that we did when she commented. She sent me some plant materials after a conversation we had had about Tessa Silk and, you know, I'm used over whether or not vegan and if not vegan, I don't want to use, you know, because I run a vegan line. And so we really got to thinking and talking about why the Tessa Silk actually works within the soap to create a slick, slippery, silky, you know, shiny bar, all the S's of soap and why it specifically is special over, you know, anything else that you could use. And so for my part, I started playing with the amino acids because that's reasonably where I think it all ends up. I think that's why it does what it does within soap. So as a result, we've been playing with fun plant fibers within the soap. So far, we've done dandelion in two different forms. And I found it very interesting that the dandelion had like so much oil in it, right? And so I was looking up whether or not it was an extract or an oil. And I've pretty well decided on oil. But I thought, let's continue on with the fun stuff that Sandy sent me, but also use some other plant-based types to see if we're going to get the same benefits from essentially, you know, a plant material that has the same amino acid structures and chains in it that Tessa Silk does. So today we are going to be playing with yellow clematis. So let's get to the video. We will talk about yellow clematis and its benefits, you know, both topically, but also theoretically within soap because of the amino acids you know, where we always do in the pouring of the thing. So let's do that. Which way do I point when I'm here? Okay, so today on our quest to find weird stuff to insert into our lye solutions, thus creating an infusion, on the quest to find, uh, I don't know, a replacement to Tessa Silk? You know, something that does the exact same thing in soap without having the you know downside of it not being vegan we are playing with clematis yellow clematis to be specific 
And this was, again, sent to me from Alaska Soap and such. She's not Alaska Soap and such anymore. I think she's now Alaska Soper. I pinned her comment in the very first video about it, so you can go follow her and find all of her information for sure. Obviously, huge thank you to her for sending me all of these cool, you know, fibers and everything to play with. And as far as how much to put into the solution, I just eyeballed it and put in a whole bunch. Basically, as much as I did for the dandelion. And as you can see with that, it's not really breaking apart at all. It is a big kind of clumpy mess with that, which is wildly different than the dandelion fibers because they actually did break apart and break down fairly easily. So, you know, we'll see how this goes. We'll definitely talk more about Clematis and its benefits on the skin if, you know, used topically after a little bit. But really, I guess the reason why I became so fascinated with this idea of how do we find a Tussa silk replacement is because there's not a lot of information out there as far as what silk does, tussa or mulberry, or, you know, just the silk, the liquid silk that you can pick up, which is made from the same stuff, what it actually does, why it does it to soap, right? We just see parroted over and over again that tussa silk provides a slip and it provides a silkier feel to the bar and it looks shinier. And that's interesting. There's still some oil in that, as you can see within the Clematis, quite a bit of oil left. And I decided just to play it fast and loose with this very strange, you know, mess of stuff, which is a very, it's very dry at the end of it, just like the dandelion was, super interesting. I decided just to break it apart and put it directly into my soap batter just to see if it broke apart or if I had weird clumps of stuff during the cut. So that's what I'm doing there. Anyway, the reason why I really wanted to test other, you know, sources of a lion fusion to, pr you know, produce a shiny, silky, smooth bar with not lots of nice slip is because, again, nobody seems to have any information on why the silks do that to soap. And so in my mind, I'm going, well, then that could be any number of things will also provide the same, you know, thing. And I'm thinking that the reason why so many people like using Tosa Silk is because it says silk right in it, right? And that's the reason why it's going to give your bar the silky smooth feel. I don't really think that that's the case. I think it has more to do with the amino acids that can be found in Tessa, but can also be found in a load of other places, right? Amino acids are, you know, arguably everywhere, but in very high concentrations in certain types of, you know, substances. Well, I mean, they're the building blocks for life, so they're like found in all, everything. But when we're talking about, you know, plants and plant materials and, you know, biology and whatnot, there are certain plants that have higher amino acid content and of specific types of amino acids than others. And so that's kind of how this whole entire idea was born, right? For example, the dandelion soaps that we did, you know, the last two days, we have Lots of amino acids within them that are great for the skin, you know, most notably the alanine and the leucine, also the lysine. Lots of skin benefits for dandelions, lots of health benefits. I will link a very fascinating, very geeky, you know, PubMed article if you are interested in reading this very cool study that I recently just found on the benefits of dandelion for, oh gosh, cancer and skin stuff. And it's, it's a very cool study. So, you know, you can read that at your leisure. But also within that, there are loads of other, as I said, plants that have beneficial amino acids that are good for the skin and also would provide that same slip. And Clematis is actually one of them. Clematis also has, I'll link another article about the Clematis that I found, which is very interesting in... Uh, well, this article that I read was about lectin and how they are using essentially clematis for also, you know, cancer and stuff, doing a lot of cool tests with that, which I find to be very interesting. But again, I think it's boiling down to the amino acids that are going to be found in these particular, you know, plant materials. So... And so, yeah, that's kind of why we've been playing with all of this, because I'm just trying to find links between the amino acids in all of these and see, you know, if we can get a vegan result with soap. Because while there are tons of benefits to these plants that we're using, uh, to the skin, tons of benefits. They've been studied, you know, I mean, they're used in homeopathy, 
whether or not there's they're viable. I mean, that's always a subject for debate. But within soap, what we are doing is we are saying that soap cleans because that's what we can do. And it's on the skin for a very short period of time, et cetera, and so forth. You've heard the spiel, all of that. We are realistically just looking for the slip and, you know, the silkiness to the bar with this. So there's that. But Clematis, you know, just for background information on Clematis, it's been used forever for all kinds of things, wound healing, and it's also antiviral. It's good for blisters, and it's been used for a very long time you know, topically to help out with skin concerns. And so thinking, obviously we don't say those things within the soap making world or whatever, but it can't be a bad thing that that's in the soap. And if it has the same amino acids as what you would find in a Tessa, which Clematis does, then all the better, right? Now for the thickness of this particular soap, uh, this was actually a twofer. It wasn't really the scent that was doing this because I used, while I did use a floral, I used a floral that was not super spicy. It was not one that doesn't ever, that gives me problems. And so I went ahead and made this overly thick. I actually mixed the batter a lot longer than I normally do just to ensure that I had some good layers to stand up because what I was sort of going for was like the little purple heads of the clematis and the green stuff. I was going for something flowery and you know I'm never super good at that but it's not really the point the whole design is not really what we're after right now obviously we're going to be after the big test you know when we test all of these soaps against each other that we're really looking forward to which I get so you know the design is designing I felt like I just had to do something other than white bars you know but this batch just like with every other batch that we have done so far it is the exact same oil blend so it's my current basic three so basically equal parts olive oil coconut oil and palm and it will be sea popped and gelled made in the exact same you know mold type we're just eliminating all of these we're controlling all of these factors you know to see what the bars ultimately do and again with this one there was so much oil that was left in that lye solution when you when I poured it into the oils, into the you know the soaping oils, I, I find it interesting. I really do think that we are extracting oils from these plant materials. And yes, I mean that means a slightly bigger super fat, but just such a marginal amount that it doesn't matter by any stretch of the imagination. And also what I found to be so interesting with the first two bars were how hard they got. Like they were rock hard. So I am curious to see if that's also the case for this guy. So let's go check out the cut and find out. And as expected, yes, this botch did end up very hard as well. And it's very, it's a really interesting thing, right? Because I haven't changed anything in this recipe aside from putting in the, you know, the, the plant material into the lye solution for an infusion. I haven't added more clay or less clay. I didn't change the super fat with, you know, these soaps either from what I normally do or what I have done looking back on my notes with these exact same scents because I have used all of these scents before. So there's that. Also, what that is, is a really pretty bar soap and there's very few little patches of the clematis that's in there. So I find that to be interesting too. All of the, I didn't see a whole lot during the pour either. So you know, that stick blender, it broke up those clumps. I was, I had my doubts, if I'm being honest, for sure. But yeah, the bars themselves, they are very, very hard. My bars get hard very fast because of the addition of clay, but they're usually not this hard, you know, 12 hours after they were poured. So I, it's a very interesting thing. I am still kind of flummoxed as to why that is, but I do find it fascinating and I'm super looking forward to testing these guys with you of course, so we can see, you know, what the big deal is. Obviously, we will again be testing these against an actual Tessa soap. I made the one, and it, it hurt a little bit, because Tessa's expensive. But Clematis, uh, you know, if you have Clematis around, that's also a, an inexpensive addition. So there's the Clematis bar. And there it is, the Clematis soap. And yeah, just like with the other one, it got super duper hard really fast and I'm really fascinated by that and 
realistically, like what I said in the video when we were, you know, doing the cut, I think it has a lot to do with the amino acids because the silk amino acids that you can pick up from, you know, Crafter's Choice or Wholesale Supplies Plus or what have you, they do tend to harden the bar much like a sodium lactate, which makes sense. So I'm thinking that that might be what's going on, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to continue to research and muse and talk about it all for sure within the rest of these videos. Speaking of the rest of these videos, this was supposed to be a four-parter. It ended up being six different soaps plus a whole day of testing, plus a whole video of testing. So look forward to that. If you would like to be notified when those, you know, drop or whatever, like tomorrow's video, for example, you can hit the subscribe button and the bell and the things, and then you'll know for sure. For those of you who have hit the subscribe and the follow and the things, you do know. So thank you, Sudzers, for existing and for having done those things. Let me know in the comments below what you think it is, why the bar hardening is happening. Because again, if it looks like oil, but the bar is harder, it's not a super fat at play because that would make the bar softer. So I don't know. It's all a thing. And I'd like to hear your opinion on it. But I am out of here for today. I actually need to get this uploaded to you guys before, you know, midnight tonight. So it'll count as a video for the day. And I have a million and two other things to be doing. And yes, I am awkward right now because sitting, A, while doing this, it is not what I do. I don't even sit when I'm recording the voiceovers for the pouring part. I, it's all a new setup. It's awkward. You know, my apologies or whatever. But anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you, Sudzers, again for existing, for being you. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy testing fun. Bye.